Thank you so very much, sir. Um, in, while you're bottling up and you're thinking of gas is 950, school fees is there, house rent is there, I need to do this and stuff like that. And the children are making noise. And your wife is telling you what happened in her office. And that at that time, you are not even th you are not in the mood at all. And you are not you're like you want to be the man of the house, not to share the problem. And she's coming, not knowing what you are going through. And she's telling you, ah, in fact, when you when I got to the office, my organ now said this, my madam now entered the bus. You know, as I was going, somebody hit my car. Uh, you know, that one has added to your problem because you know you are the one that will fix the car. You know. And she said all of this. What do you do? How do you feel? How do you relate with at that point, like what daddy said? What do, do you feel like? I said, Madam, shut up. And when you say that, it gets to, you know, because she's coming with excitement, seeing you as a friend. There's nobody to talk with. You are the friend that she has. Even having kept everything in, the off, uh, in her heart to come to the help. So what do you do at that time? You know, because these are things, I'm not saying it's peculiar to you, but these are things that we know that happens in our homes. Praise be to Jesus. And it's not as if women don't bottle up too. They do. But at a time, they just invite their, when they, they lose it, 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 it's something else. Then another one I want to ask. When you, there's an issue, you, are, you, you want to go, because when we went to do the, when we went to the court, they told me something. They told us rather, and I held it. They said, if you have an issue with the man, allow him to go out. If, yes, if he wants to go out, allow him to go out. Let him go and take fresh, fresh air. But women, being what we are, we want to settle the matter. Right there and, do you understand? And we have some men that they will go out and they, when they come back, they will never discuss. And a woman wants, to come to, wants you to come to the table Let's iron it out. Let's talk about it. But some men don't want to talk about it. Praise be to Jesus. You know, so I've said two things. When there are issues, you want to go out, and the woman is like, you cannot go anywhere. Does it happen? Uh -huh. You cannot go anywhere. And the other one, when you are bought, when you are bought so much, and the woman is telling you, this, 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 or the children are making us. So what do we do? Praise the Lord. Well, you know, in man's world, it's stage by stage and grade by grade. You know, gone are the days when my children were small. You know, when mommy say, when they are making noise, everybody is there. The mommy want, to, wants to, want, want me to hear her. The children will want you to hear them, and everywhere is chaotic. In most cases, what you do as a man, I tend to towards stay more with my children. I will say, my wife to wait when the the children are maybe when they go to bed we cannot discuss that issue. So, but now they are all adults, so nobody is disturbing anybody. So that's why I say stage by stage at that small age stage you need to at least guide them, play with them, and then put them where they belong. Then you cannot sit with your wife and discuss issues. And again, like uh, I think Brother Murray said, Brother you know when you when you have issues. Like a man, like I was saying initially, buckling it up doesn't help matters. At times it brings a certain cha a health challenge to you. It's always good to share it with your wife. And in most cases, even when you think your wife will not have a solution to it, when you discuss it with her, by the time you finish everything about you, you will just be relieved. You, if, if you try it, it, it works. In most cases, if I have serious issues that I will think, in, how do I, I don't need to bother this woman. But when I say, Sit down, let's discuss it. After discussing it with our own idea, my own idea, everything will just be sorted out. And again, when you talk to a mommy, talk to her about when you have that crisis and you need to go out. I'm not a going out type. I don't go to clubs, I don't go to anywhere. So, I use my Bible, I read. When that kind of maybe I'm um, stressed, the only stress I normally have is from office, no other place. It's not from my family, it's not from my friends, it's not from the members of the church just office because you get to a certain level you need the demand be too high that by the time you finish all your brain will be hot when i come back under that situation my wife will understand 
He will not want to say anything. He will say, take it easy. I'm taking your body. It does everything. He will allow me to relax. He will not as hard as the office today. If I have the, at times I don't have the, I always, when I'm angry, I don't want to share anything. I say everything was fine. You know, then he will start talking. Maybe in the course of our discussion, I will now bring up what happened in the office, which I don't know, I don't want to tell you. So it's a question of the person understanding you, like uh, uh, Eddie who said, if you understand your wife, your wife understands you. There's a time, you, if your wife, if I looked at my wife, like when she comes back to the office, if she's moody, kind of, I will not want to talk, say anything. But after some time, I'll say, they say, how was the office? I said, they should open up. But if you just bounce down, the person just walked in, the, the way it's looking, haggard and everything, you will not start, hey, this person do this, this person do this one. I mean, if, whether you like, if you are not, if you are not controlled, don't have self-control, you will react violently. So women should know when to approach their husband. And husband should also know how to, have. everybody goes through stress. Whether man or woman, no, all of us will go through stress. When you understand your partner, know when that is stressed off, allow the person to relax, cool off, and then before you bring them any issue that you need to deliberate on. That is my own take. Hallelujah. From what I just catch now from Pastor Pius, it means that in the man's world there are different grades and different levels and stages. There are the times when the children are still very young, so we must know what to do at that time. And so the second part again that I catch again is it still depends on the homes. Not every woman understands. And like he said, his own stress is not from anywhere but from office. And you can come home. There are some homes where the stress is from home. Office is even more relaxing. There are others where the stress is from traffic. Now, like mommy said earlier, you said a problem sucks, a problem shared, shared is half solved. I think that's that's relative. There are some people you share a problem with. Ah, a problem shared with some people is still your problem. Now you you still carry your wahala. And then and that says self. A problem shared is multiplied. You will regret why they haven't said it at all. So the key here now is understand like Eldai who said, know yourselves, woman know herself, man know himself, and then know how to blend and have the most rosy relationship or home or marriage. It's not that it is void of problem, but understand how to manage the problem and deal with them even while they are there, as if they are not there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, my own take is that I think it deals on maturity. You know, when you start anew in a marriage, there are two different people coming together to live together. Different ideas, different um, perception to life. But um, as time goes on and you mature and you know things like Pastor Kemka said, you can sense the mood of your husband when he comes in and sees that, oh, his face is not looking good today. Oh. He's to find out what's happening. But when he's coming, smiling, you know that maybe a lot has entered, so you can cozy up to him. Uh, so that's that. So it is, um, it is knowing his mood, reading your husband and knowing him to know when to bring up issues. And also to the man, too. If you find that you're in a situation where your wife is, um, the family is showing up, as in the wife is talking and the children are playing. It is just to, well, what may I will say, what may I will do is to partition your mind. <laughs> to partition your mind, right? And um, do your bit. Attend, listen to her. Even if it's blindly, listen to her. Play with the children. And at the end of the day, go and attend to your problems at your own time. In relation to, in respect to the issue of um, resolving issues, uh, there will always be fights, there will always be arguments. But um, it is knowing your place and knowing how to resolve it. We all have different temperaments. If one is blowing hot, the other should know that I should blow cold. And if both of you are hot at the same time, the best thing is once you leave the place, 
because um, the devil is always looking for where to sow his seed. <coughs> when both of you are hot and you get annoyed and you insult yourself in front of the children, it sends a bad signal. It, se- it shows a, a, it's not what you should portray to the children. Yes, we will always fight. Like I tell myself, we will go into the room and we can insult ourselves from morning till night, but it's, it's not here. So, at most times, the best one, one should walk away. And at the end of the day, you come back and uh, I don't like what you did, or whoever is best, one person should be mature enough to broach the topic and resolve it. Uh, the most important thing is that realizing the mistake and accepting it and moving ahead. Amen. Men being watched that. What if you have a situation, I'm throwing it to everybody now. What if you have a situation where he goes out and he comes in, you allow him to go out, you know. He goes out to ease himself, not necessarily go to, to go into the club or anywhere, maybe just within the compound. And uh, you stay back in the house, in the room. And he comes back and you're trying to like, you know, talk about it and... He's saying, no, 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 it's over, I'm done. I don't want to talk about it. And it's happened several times. You know, what advice would you give? I'm not saying it's peculiar to you, you know, for such, because if, if it's not happening, I'm not going to cite such an example, you know. The, 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 the man does not want to talk about it. it, it to him, it's done. He has cooled himself. He has a way of, you know, cooling off himself. But the woman is still boiling up. Maybe the man offended the woman and the man does not want to talk about it. What should such a woman do? Okay. Like I said, we must, in a marriage, you must study yourselves. Um, if I use the local language, you say you must know your, mumu, the, your husband's mumu button. Yes. So does man, men have mumu button? Everybody has a button. Men, do you have mumu button? Everybody has a button. Man, I don't know. Uh, Yes, ma'am. We I have want to look for. Well, yes, please do that. So, the same way, too, you must know what to do to your wife to get her to do what you want. It's understanding. So, once you, you study your wife, okay, he's still hot. Okay, she's still hot. Okay, he doesn't want to talk about it now. Maybe at a particular time. It might be two days. It might be three days. Patience. You can now say, maybe a month later. At so and so time, this and this happened. Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Uh, for example, something happened last weekend, right? And uh, it took a day later. My wife came to me and said, this and this and this happened. Um, okay, I'm sorry, we are sorry. At the end of the day, it was resolved. But it took like a day. I'm using it as an example, my personal example. So, I'm saying that it is studying yourself. If your husband is hot-tempered, that is nature. There's nothing you can do about it. You don't have to be hot-tempered to resolve that. So that means you must either be a bit calmer so that you can... The being hot-tempered doesn't mean that he's a bad person. It just means that's his person's temperament. You two can be calm to see the better part of him. So I'm saying that. So if he doesn't want to talk about it now, maybe he's still angry or maybe she's still annoyed. You can say, okay, I'll look for a, the right time to talk about it. That question mom is asking is, it's not particularly, it's not peculiar to you. Like I said, I'm not going out time. If there's such a thing happen, my advice would be, if the man goes out to cool off, when he comes back, he's supposed to go back to the wife and they sit down now that the, his head is now cool, for them now to discuss the issue. It will not shy away from the issue. Because as long as you are shying away, like mommy is saying, the woman is big boy, she's not happy. She's not happy. And then you are trying to avoid it. You should not avoid it. Discuss it now that your brain is cool. The essence of going out in the first place is to allow you to go and cool off. Then come back to your senses. Then you can now sit down and say, okay, that thing you said, let's discuss it now. I think that is really the way to go. Sorry, sir. So, when you talk from Kafansha to Kutangora, one word, pim, will not come out. And the woman is hurting. 
Do you understand? It's ordained. She wants to hair herself. She wants to unbottle whatever has been bottled up. And for, I mean, days after, the man is doing as if everything is fine. But nothing happened. But something happened that he had shied away from. He had refused to settle. He has, you know, he has a mechanism of cooling off himself. You know, things bother women more than men. Do I, do you have, do I have a witness in the house? Women are... It's Father's Day, yes. We want to have a better home. Um, we want me, you man. to have a... You, we really want to give you that, you know. We, we are more bothered than men. You know, a woman can... Something might happen and she's brooding her over what has happened. And you, the man is pretending as if nothing ever happened. He goes out, he wears his shirt in the morning, he goes to work. The woman goes out, not even a call from... She probably would even call, call him... Or he could even call the woman to say, have you eaten? Meanwhile, I refuse to mention what happened at home in the morning or the night before. Say from now to tomorrow, they will say, you are a parrot. You are talking, but he will not say one thing. Praise be to Jesus. So, is it that, that some men that are, is it a way of punishing women? I'm sorry, it's your day. We, we, we have celebrated you and we are still celebrating you. But these are things that happen in homes that we need to resolve. Excuse Hallelujah. Me, Mama. Mama, what used to cause that type of thing? Some women, where I see, and men, where I see some problems in family like that. Repeating words. Let's say we discuss something now and finish it. You say sorry. And say. So when you came in the afternoon or before afternoon, you repeat that word again. Then you repeat the past. That is, some don't have mind of forgiveness and forget. Repeating words used to bring problems. That's in the another family. issue, sir. Yes. Repeating words. If the man has said sorry, and you are bringing it again, as if you have not forgiven the man. This are, the so man has not even said sorry. The man had not discussed it. The man had not discussed it. He has and not it brought you to it. The woman is trying to get his attention to discuss it. He is shying away from it. Brother Sunday, let's hear from you. You help us to solve the matter now. Watch. Amen. Amen. Although there are some men, no matter how, even even they should be the one at fault, they will never say sorry. But as a man, as I used, as I said, before, a man must know himself as a man. As a man, both of you are having some argument, and you went out, you cool down yourself, and now you see, you now see that your wife is still ah. Me at least a man supposed to know his wife's weak point. That if if I do this thing for her, she must surely come down. She must know the best of her wife. Sorry, her mumu button. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> like a uh, one woman. She told me that no matter how there is argument between her and her, and her, and her husband, she and her husband, she said no matter how that argument may be, ah, that I know her husband may not want to grill, but she knows that if he put, if, if she put Sonny Ade's song, mm -mm, he must surely come down. So that's the man's mumu button. That is her own mumu, uh, mumu, mumu button. button. So you must know that this woman that is still boiling, I know what I will do for her. She must surely come down. But what I what I discovered is that some men they are just living with their wife, but they don't know her weak points. They don't even understand the kind of wife they are getting married to. So those are the and that's the first thing you must when you get married to a woman. First thing is that you must love her, you must trust her. Then the last but not the least is understanding. That understanding is very, very important. If there is no understanding in the marriage, that marriage will collapse. Okay, thank you, sir. So, any addition? Okay, I disagree, ma, on what he said. He said that some women and some men, when they are living, you cannot understand it. The issue is that, the, how can you, now you are 21, Nobody can come and tell you that this is the life of a pastor. 
If you are living with a woman for years, I way you look like this, you're supposed to understand that very well. Yeah. So what, 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 from the question I asked, from the question I asked, it's that uh, I didn't just form the question. It's happening somewhere okay, or okay. somehow. Okay. That's okay. why I'm asking that question. Okay. For such a woman that has such an husband, a husband rather, that a husband will not come to the table and discuss issues that have happened. You know, that woman will say, I don't understand my, hus my husband. That's the woman is frustrated. It's, it's, a, it's a new couple. <laughs> it can happen like that now. You uh, cannot understand. You know that, sir, over, do you know that, sir, some, there are men that you talk blee, 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 from morning to night, the man will not say anything. Um, woman will say her own man. He's a human being. Uh, the woman is talking about the uh, ideal marriage. There are some people that are living together. They are not marrying. You don't understand it. When you go out there, you see people. And when you close from work, they won't want to go home. Husbands. They want to stay in the club till when the wife goes to bed. Where is the understanding there? So, a lot of issues. If we are talking about ideal, not in ideal situation, you're supposed to understand your wife after uh, ship, uh, before getting married. Not talking of getting to 15, 20 years. Even at 40, you see people at 40 years, they are still divorcing their wife. No, why? They don't understand. They are 48 years of advance, wedding advancement. You see them, they'll go out to court, they say they want separation. So, it's just uh, there. Like what daddy said, maybe he's saying new couple or no new couple. It's not the matter of new couple because I've seen the marriage of 18 years. The husband and wife are still living like cats and rats. What make us, what make me to know is, was that the woman is a dignitary in the church. Her husband is just ordinary member. One that day, they were, they were in serious argument. The man now went to go and meet the pastor down. Daddy come and meet this woman who, He's, as he's doing some, some things to me. That pastor now went to that woman. In front of pastor, the woman is still insulting her husband. The that pastor now said, in front of me, you are still insulting your husband. As in 18 years marriage, pastor now slapped the face of that woman. And immediately that man to slap pastor's face. He said, I am not, I didn't tell you to come and slap her for me. That is how we have been living. And I think, and he said, and he is content with the way they are living. As in a marriage of 18 years, they are still living like cats and rats. So definitely there is no understanding in that marriage. That's why they are living like cats and rats. They understood themselves now. Pastor slap woman, man slap pastor. That's understood. Why, why would you slap my wife? That's what Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then in the area of giving, I know some women have issues, you know, with their husband giving or doing, you know, just being kind out there. Is it right for a man to give somebody something? Maybe give someone money without telling your wife? Praise be to Jesus. Is it right for a man to give someone something outside? It could even be within the house. And you don't tell your wife. And maybe the person that the man had given something to comes around, sees the woman, thinking that two, you no, know, it takes two to tangle, that definitely the man would have told his wife, you know, and goes, ah, mommy, or auntie, Show, thank you very much oh, for the money. He said, Which money? Ah, the money that daddy gave me. Ah, the money that Mr. Alabaja gave me. Then <laughs> you're like, <laughs> What happened? Do you understand? So, which is better to not just I mean, to tell your wife? And we're going to look at it from different side because one side will like, If I tell her, she will discourage me from giving, or she will bring lists that, Oh, we have not paid school fees. We have not eaten, there's no oil at home, there's no sugar, there's no milk. So such, you know, the woman will not encourage me to give. And you know that that is your life. Do you understand? You have a heart to do so. You have a heart to give. And you give without telling her which one is better. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. I don't think anyone has there's an issue in any of these scenario. If I give to fight for a genuine purpose, and the person comes back and says thank you to my wife, it's to her own glory too. You understand? There is no there is disclosure. There's nothing wrong in that. The only place and we're talking about openness and hope. I know, I know. What I'm saying is that the only place you feel an issue is because maybe you don't want me to give the person the thing. When the person comes and says, ah, thank you for the gift given, you know, so, 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 so. So there is no, there is no secret in that transaction. Maybe the only, you can say, oh, this person came to tell me that you gave, I say, yes, I forgot, I gave her the so, so. And I think with that, there should be no issue in that. Because, um, you too have the capacity to give too. It's not all the time you tell me all the things you give. But out of trust, you know, as it, so it comes back to understanding too. Out of trust and understanding. Oh, maybe after three months, uh, a bank, uh, thank you this mommy for me. She did this. Oh, someone told me you did I said, yes, I did it last month. Said, okay, no problem. So, but it is understanding and trust that matters. That's just the bottom line about that. Because still one pause. If I do something good, the blessing and the grace will also come upon you too. So it's, it's still, it's like one person is sowing a seed. I will not bear the fruit of that seed alone. It comes on my home too. So when you do good, so far it's, for a justi- it's justified, it's for a good purpose. There's not, it doesn't mean that we are running an accounting firm where Inflow and outflow must balance. You get, but it is done with a clear conscience. I don't think there's any problem with that. Maybe for information purpose, yes. But if it's not done, it doesn't mean there is an ulterior motive or anything wrong with that. That's my own take. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For me, I don't think uh, there's nothing wrong for you to give anybody anything without the consent of your wife and there's nothing wrong also with getting your wife's consent in most cases if i give there's some people i want to give i will carry my wife along there are people i want to give i don't carry my wife along i'm not doing it because of any ulterior motive like uh, a clear conscience not everything anybody if i want to give you one couple one thousand i'll go and tell my wife that is not it's not uh, this enough and in most cases even some people that will give, they will call my wife, oh, thank, thank you uh, for what a uh, husband, my wife will call him, say, hey. So, so, so person call me, I know say, you give and son, I say yes. That's all. And then she won't pick any of questions because she knows that I have that, and I, I, I give people things, and she gives too. So we have the same kind of common understanding. But the only thing is that, yes, I, I see some couples, they say they have a, a what do you call it, joint account. One lady was telling me in the office, joint account, okay, joint account, knee. If I have my, if after the paying the salary, what of all that money, if I have, I have my own account where I can use it to do whatever I like. So what they're saying, you are just receiving yourself. So the only thing, like you said, like he said, is that having your conscience clear, doing that, you are not using, doing anything, don't have any ulterior motive, anything behind the, that, what you are giving. Your conscience is very clear, and then you do it with the heart of God. I don't think there's any problem with that. Thank you. Amen. Prophet. You see, the thing is 50-50. Look, as my daddy said, you can tell your you can tell your wife. You may not tell your wife. If you know that this thing I want to do, if I tell my wife, if it's, if you tell me to go ahead, fine. But if you know that this one I want to do, no matter how, if I tell her, no matter how I want to convince her. She will never. It's better you don't tell her. Because I could remember one man when he was sharing his testimony, how he become really rich. He said he has 100,000 in his account. He paid 10,000 naira tight. Remain 90,000. Use it to do whatever I like. So what they are saying, you are just receiving yourself. So the only thing, like you said, like he said, is that having your conscience clear, doing that, you are not using, doing anything, don't have any ulterior motive, anything behind the, that what you are giving. Your conscience is very clear, and then you do it with the heart of God. I don't think there's any problem with that. 
Thank you. Amen. Prophet. You see, the thing is 50-50. Look, as my daddy said, you can tell your wife, you can tell your wife. You may not tell your wife. If you know that this thing I want to do, if I tell my wife, if it's he will tell me to go ahead, fine. But if you know that this one I want to do, no matter how, if I tell her, no matter how I want to convince her, she will never. It's better you don't tell her. Because I could remember one man when he was sharing his testimony, how he become really rich. He said he has 100,000 in his account. He paid 10,000 naira tithe, remain 90,000. He now sit there. If I should tell my wife that I want to use this remaining 90,000 for church, she will never agree. Secretly, he did it. And when he did it, he now told me, he now told me that, do I know the country that is most stinginess, the most stinginess country? I, just, I said, I don't know. He said, it's China. And he now told me that it's China that award his company to him, that he should, be, take, he should take it away. But suppose if he did not do that offering, he don't know what can happen. He now told me that, as I'm looking at his, as, at his wife, it's not everything he wants to give out that he used to tell her. Because if, she, if, if, she can, if he can tell her, she will not allow him to do it. So there are some he will tell him, there are some he won't. So that is why I said the thing is 50-50 because there are some things you want to, the man will want to give out. But the wife will say, no, no drama. But there are some he said you can go ahead. Amen. Any question from, okay. Praise the Lord. But this question is for both men and the women. A man is coming back from work in the evening and the man is exhausted and no cash in the pocket. The wife does not know that the man does not have money in the pocket. And, and she calls the man. There's no sugar at home or there's no milk at home and she just lined up things like that and when the man gets home and he's not able to provide those things, how do the, how do the women, how will the, will the woman feel? And how would the man also feel? Do you feel less a man or the woman too? Amen. Who wants to answer that question? No sugar, no milk, no soup. Praise the Lord. First of all, um, there should be an understanding you plan your family the issue of the man the woman waiting for you to come back before asking you no sugar, no milk, no this meaning that you don't discuss she never told you that those things are finished before you left the house that one should not arise in the first place because you have to plan your home what I mean planning your home is like Every month end, you have the allowance you bring out. The woman plans the home, maybe adding her own or something, even if she does not have to plan that one that you have given to her. She does not have to wait for you to come back from work before telling you. That is very wrong from a woman anyway. So what I mean is that you have to plan your home. Okay, ma, what if it's not uh, a salary earner? What the person is not, uh, a daily... Uh, uh, like these taxi people now, they earn daily, if you know, or maybe weekly or uh, fortnightly. Okay, fine. If it's weekly, the, if, I don't understand why the man should just come in and the woman start saying there's no sugar, there's no milk. Okay, buy okay maybe she will when call you to help bring those things home. Yeah. That means it's fine. That's how you've been living. So if she calls you to bring those things. Well, uh, if, you, if you don't have the money, there's no money in your pocket. You can tell her that you don't have money in your pocket. She will know how to manage. I mean, that, there should still be understanding. understanding. If there is no money, you manage. There's no money. Thank you, ma'am. So, Sister Tony, I thought you raised your hand. Oh. My mind is not on the question. Okay. Okay. Um, we are talking about men's world. And this is what people say. They will say it's a men's world, it's a men's world. But I just want to say something that uh, we are in the realm, we are in the time. Time has changed so many things. 
The Bible said that a man that cannot provide for his family is worse than an infidel. But, uh, 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 anyway. but now, it's not, I, I, I don't want to say the, that, quote, that quote is kind of contradicting the time we are now. But I want to say that it's not only when the man brings pay school fees, pay this, house rent, all those things that makes you a man. What makes you a man at times is the support you even give that woman. How do you, how you when you have a wife, when you marry a wife, a, a woman, as a man, you are supposed to discover that woman. You are supposed to know her strengths, her weaknesses. You are to, supposed to know where this woman is good at. And you are to capitalize on that strength in order to build the home. For example, something happened in my office. A guy, a, a, a colleague of mine came to me and like his wife, and the wife is planning to relocate to UK with the children. And the wife work in a place that she has the money to do that. But the man is seeing it as I'm the head of the family. I should be the one to decide whether they should move to UK or not. That's why the fact that she said that she's going to use her money to do all the whole process. But she wants all of them, including the husband, that they should move to UK and leave Nigeria. But the man don't want to go to UK. She, he wants to stay. And he was bothered. His, the thing was disturbing him. When he asked me, I said, OK, what if, if, if your wife has the opportunity and the strength and the money to move all of you to UK, to me, it's a good thing. You understand, you have to look at that side that, okay, this is her, this is her strength, this is her passion, this is what, why not ask, why not see into that strength, like, what can I benefit when I move to UK? Ask her, okay, if I move to UK, what do you want me to do there? What do you think I can do? By the time you sit down and talk, you'll be able to know. She too, she will understand that, okay, this is our movement to UK, this is, likely the outcome of it. Not that you seeing it as if I'm the man of the house, I should be the one to decide because you have money more than me. You should not be able to, you should not be the one to decide. I say no, you don't do that. You should discover your wife. This is her strength. This is where she can come in, she can help you. For the children, fine. She, the wife is on the side of the children that she wants the children to have a better life. To, to grow in a society that is better than Nigeria. Are you looking at it in that way? So we're able to like convince, you know, we are many that we're now talking about it in the office and we're able to convince him that he should go back home and sit with the wife and see reason why they should move. And you too, now don't say because the wife have money to do all this process. You now come out with your own money and say, okay, I'm going to support that movement. I'm going to, you, you will not be the only one. Now I have agreed that let's go, you support. So what I'm saying is that in man's world, we, it's not about uh, you saying, okay, I'm the head of the family. No, discover that your wife. Sometimes your wife has a talent. She may not know that she has that talent. You are the one that will discover and say, I think you are good in this area. I think you are good in this area. Maybe you talk too much, you will be good in marketing. And if you have this business, you will be able to excel because I've discovered that you like talking. And when you talk, you convince people to do it. So you discover that wife, you make that wife to grow. And that is how you see that uh, family these days. You are, if you don't do that, you will not be able, you just burden yourself with all the load, all the expenses, everything. You just burden yourself to that. Hallelujah. On the second thing I want to talk about is uh, men, now, the, the, uh, when you say that the woman has something bothering her mind and they have issues, the man is not willing to talk about it. I think a marriage is a process. The woman should be able to study the man and know the appropriate time to bring the issues out. It's not when the man is come back from work, he said it's hot. He wants to bring issue out to discuss. Sometimes it's not in the morning when the man wants to rush out 
to meet one appointment or the other, you want to bring the issue out. You should be able to study your man. It may not even be during the week. It may be weekend. Okay. It, you have said three things. Sorry, let me help you to cheap one. Not when he's going out. Not when he's coming back. It or may not, not be. Okay. It may not be when he's sleeping and you say, how far? You say, it I, may I, be when he's I've sleeping. A, no, I've had a stressful day. I want to sleep. Please leave me alone. So when out of this time and season that you get to speak with them? Mommy, it depends on the issue you want to discuss. If it is urgent, if it is something, for, the, for example, if it's something about your child you want to discuss and the thing is urgent, the man come back from work, he may not even have the sense to give you the right answer at that particular time. So you allow him, even since you know you want to discuss something that is urgent and important, you already, just like they said, they have their mumu buttons. You already know something that will make him happy. Maybe he's coming back, you know his best food is uh, rice, jollof rice and fried rice and this thing. You might prepare it, even by the time the man see the table, prepare, he will know that, ah, the next thing is that there is a question he must answer. So you're, you must know how you present that thing before you even present what is in your mind. You prepare the way for you to learn, to bring that issue out. Since it's urgent, and you want the man, just make the man happy when he come back. Make him settle down, make him happy at that time when he come back. Let him feel at home. Then you can now say, ah, this, 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 he will listen. Then sometimes it may be in the night, after he has rested for, you wait for like four hours, you say, ah, at least this man must have calm down. When I wake him up, he will not have a dick. Amen. Then you can wake him up and discuss the matter. Sometimes it depends on the issue. It might be weekend. You can say, ah, darling, I'm taking you out to today. Amen. And so, 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 <laughs> please. Because you have something you want to discuss. Depend on the issue. You. Thank you. Take your husband out. Hallelujah. Yes. Give to mommy his strength. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Concerning the question that Maybe your husband, when your husband is going out, you ask him to get some things, and when he returns, he's unable to get those things. My own is that as a woman, you should be able to provide. Because no matter how gentle the man is, no matter how gentle the man is, if he returns with nothing, with, without money, and you ask him something, it's lap Number one, there is a question I want to ask, mommy. There is a family that the man is caring and everything. He's good in everything. He provides everything. But the only problem the man has is whenever the wife's family visits that house, he likes sweeping. He likes sweeping. You will not sit more than five minutes. You will start sweeping, sweeping. So my advice, what do you advise that family? When the wife's, when the wife's uh, family uh, are around. No, no, his that own family. It's true, fa true story, oh, mommy. Wait, wait now. The Who's husband's family, family. When they are around, that's when, when they, they are around, the man will sweep. When the family when are around. When the wife's, of, uh, the family of the wife, the both family, mm. when they came to visit those family, the husband will start sweeping. Does this sweep naturally? Like, when you stay like one hour, you can sweep like 30 times. They are not around. No, before if they are not around, they will not sweep. Uh, bring him to church now for the big plans. Eh? No, mommy. There's something wrong. There's something wrong, and he sweeps as many times, you know, maybe within in, within one hour. There's something wrong. Maybe the mother, the mother-in-law has brought something. Oh, tomorrow for that one is deliverance. Advise him. I must say something. Okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, Brother Peter, your question, sir. To me, if I'm saying you, not you now, I'm just using you. If you have been a good father and a good husband, you have always been providing for the family. And now your wife calls you and says, ta, 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 and all that. And you don't have money in your pocket. Abba, the woman should understand. Because you have always been doing it. But if the wife reacts, it shows score is worrying the woman. You understand? But if you are the type, if you have not been providing, 
and the wife called and said, okay, oh, this is and you come, nothing. The woman will react because you have not been doing it. Amen. Amen. Then another question I want to ask, give to mommy. The question that I want to ask, what if a man says, no, outrightly. I don't have, you know that some I don't have, you know, um, maybe by next week, by next month we can look at it, but I don't have the, I don't have full stop. You know there's some I don't have, there's comma at the back, but there's some I don't have that has a full stop as in woman, if you want to eat your head on the wall, go and eat it. There's nothing that, and it has to do with you, with your home, with your children. I mean, the man says, I don't have, I don't have. Where do you expect the woman to get the money from? Praise be to Jesus. And maybe a woman has been open to you that this is what I am. Do you understand? And you probably will sit down and, you know, men are very calculative. We sit down and help you to calculate. <laughs> you know, that ah, and she's supposed to still have some money now. And you come with, I don't have. In other words, you still have money that you can use to. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, it might not be in all cases. Both parties. You know, because I have some people in my office. They don't tell their wife, so if, ah, if you, they don't see, as, you know. So, but what I'm saying is, why should a man say, I, it will look straight into your eyes like this, and say, I don't have. And what do you expect the woman to do? He has a project that the wife does not know about. Exactly. I don't have one now, and ensure you provide. Not, I don't have, I'm um, full stop. Always put, I don't have, comma. Praise, do we agree? I don't have, comma, but not, I don't have, full stop. I don't have, full stop can make women have high blood pressure. Praise be to Jesus. Give to mommy your seal. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to contribute on two, two things. The first one is when the man refused to, you know, settle the issue was on ground, pretending not to know what's on ground. Yes, in that case, well, it happened to me in my time. I did, I, if you have such a man, you just forget it. His conscience will be his judge. I did to my husband, you know what he did? He bought KDK table fan. He said, take this one, take the for the table. I know you have fine in your room. He knows he has offended me, because most, most men can't say I'm sorry. They don't. Most. They don't know how to say it. They use certain things, you know, that you, they know you like. Either they buy you clothes, or they, they'll, they'll do something to sweeten your heart. You know you have apologized. So there's no need dragging that matter. That's that. Then it is in the case of a man, I don't know, uh, let me pass the question to our uh, men. If you want to marry a woman, and you ask the woman or lady, that what is she doing for her living? She says, at times I do this, at times I do that. She don't give you one particular answer. She's a liability in short. She's just coming up. Would you like to marry such a woman? That's my question. Hallelujah. We are just chipping from what we have said so far, a few of them. Um, as Peter was talking about, the man is coming from from B.I. to Ikeja. And then he's somewhere around the um, uh, Obalende. And the wife is saying, no sugar, no gas, no distance. Ah, very easy now. If it's a man who who has had it up here already in the office, he will just divert his vehicle towards Lagoon. Ah, so we just pray that. You can just say, ah, okay. Then if he packs and then Say, come and carry Boto. I just leave Boto for now. They are not available. There should be understanding between, between the couple on how to communicate. Because sometimes the man might really have had it up here from the office, and the woman is not coming to add up to it again. And he has nothing. He knows he can't do it. In fact, for some, except for the grace of God, he might not want to finish that journey to get home. He was already getting close to Todd Milan Bridge. He would just get there a little bit, park and then leave a note, say, I'll leave auto for now. So go have mercy. In that case, I would advise for women, when you, when you talk, 
because you don't know if the man has been exhausted. You know, so don't just come with, there's nothing, there's nothing. First of all, ask, how are you? How has the day been? Are you fine? What should I prepare for you? You know, before you can chip in that. Or at that first time, if you notice that the man is exhausted, don't mention those things. If you ask him, where exactly are you? You know that, okay, is that Obalende? Then you know from Obalende, he will get to which bus stop again? No, sir. <laughs> he will get to another bus stop. I don't know those areas. To a pute meta, no, maybe he will not get to Woron Shoki. If, if you calculate it, you know that this man would have gotten to Woron Shoki. You can pick your phone again and say, ah, I just said I should find out where you are. You understand? Before she, he gets close to the house, you are the one doing the calculation now. The people of us are calculating. You to calculate your own. Do you understand? Before it might be the third call that you will now call him and say, Oh, I forgot to mention it in the morning. There is no milk. Don't come with a command tone to say there's no sugar. There's not the man like daddy said, he may enter lagoon. Do you understand? Or he might not necessarily enter lagoon, but he's tired, he's afraid of coming home. Praise be to Jesus. You know, so understanding like all of us have said, then nobody has answered the final, I don't have. Why should a man say, I don't have, and put a full stop? Amen. That was just point one. I think there were about four issues on ground quickly. Okay, we'll settle that one. I remember there was another one before Mommy Israel. But Mommy Israel said, when in-laws are around, or when the man's parents are around, that's when she's, she's, the man sweeps. The man has an ulterior motive. He's a wicked man. He's tired of the marriage. He's thinking of how to rope the woman into trouble. He wants to let them know that, look, this woman is enslaving me. And I'm tired of this one. He has, he's going for something that he wants to do. Amen. Why should a man say, full stop? Now, like I said earlier, it's conditional. Pastor Paz also said so. It depends on the family. You know, the man may have been coping with the woman, and the woman has a way of nagging him down. So he too is trying to build a defense system. So when she comes, she wants to prove that, look, you can't push me out this time around. I don't have, go and hit her if you want to. If the woman understands him, in fact, to enter the man's world, and like we all saying, the women have a major role to play. They must understand how to also pad the man. Because when the man begins to build up defense system to say, look, I will get to a point where no matter what you do, I will refuse to move. Then there's a problem in that home. For a man to say, I don't have and he puts a full stop there, that means it has been on and on. It has been going on. And he is now looking for ways to checkmate her. But once there's an understanding, they know how to communicate with themselves to work out easily. Praise the Lord. Now, very quickly, too, let me just throw in this one as well. You know, I know, I, like I said, there were four of them, four issues, but I know I've mentioned three. I can't remember the third one. Okay, Tony was also talking about one aspect as well. But then, that's okay. Let me put this one out. Every man must be understood by the woman because prophet, prophet, uh, Prophet Sonny has said something earlier that this one also applies to not just men now, but even clergymen, men of God and all. Let me use me as an example quickly. You know, many times people don't understand this. For pastors, they carry so much attention and load, but people will not know. And what people demand is sometimes they say a pastor is dying. They say a pastor, quick, before you die, get one quick, answer my problem quickly. You have to die, die after. That is the general, I'm telling you that's the notion. But you won't know, but we know. You know, ah, this person to die, pastor, don't die yet. Quick, quick, quick. See my problem. Move. Because there are people who tell us, make sure you are resting. But you see, I get this problem. That means answer my own face. If you are like rest, if you are like don't rest. I used to have somebody, Osai Noma, when she, she sometimes just call, Daddy, how is mommy? I'll say she's fine. How are you? I'll say fine. That's what she just got to say. In fact, you look forward to her call because she, that's somebody who wants to know whether you are okay. And they will have people who call you. Once they call you, you know that. In fact, sometimes you are scared when you see their call because nah, it's nagging. Not your wife, not your husband, though, but 
Somebody just calls you and because they know you have. Somebody has called me before by 3.30 in the morning. Strange person. I don't even know the person. The person just called me from the blues. I don't know the person. At about 3.30 or thereabout. When I paid the call, he said, so it's true. I said, what is true? He said, I'm told that you don't sleep. That anytime I call, you will pick the call. That's what I call. Is that why you just want to waste my time? Said, and that was all. I mean, imagine. From, I just told myself, I said, any call I come by this time anymore, I won't pick again. Now, you see, people push people to do some things. So when a man says, I don't have full stop, he may have been pushed for so long. So understand your man. Understand the situation. Understand who your man is, what kind of job he does, what stresses him, and how to pad him and make life come. How, how you yourself can complement his own life and make life easy for him as well. Hallelujah. I'll see you just ask a question. He said, uh, well, how do you, if you want to marry, the kind of uh, person that is not doing anything, say, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You are marrying like busy from the onset. What do you do? I think in marriage, what you marry is potential and not just what the person is, is at that particular time. It's potential the person has. That's what we marry most times. Because even when I married my wife, she was in her final year, so she could finish school and won't be able to get a job. So, but I had that this thing that she had the potential when she finished, she will get a good job and then things will work out. She was not doing anything. So many people like that. So I think what we'll be looking at marriage is the potential that the person has, not just what the person is doing at that particular time. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. The last question, I will just need one person to answer that. We, um, <laughs> most times when Pastor Apollos climbs here to pray, I know many of you will know his uh, Bible character, by Thompson. I, I, there was one, the last time he used Samson to pray. I said, one day when you get to heaven, you are going to meet Samson. I said, <laughs> So we are looking at the life of Samson and Delilah. Three times, Delilah went to meet Samson. Where does your strength lie? He told her, and Yamagara, people came to do this thing. They couldn't. The second time, the third time, until the fourth time. Do we call that love or stupidity? Praise be to Jesus. Is it part of knowing Mumu Botting? Is <laughs> okay, Pastor Apollos. <laughs> you know something very well. Is one person that wants that is Delilah three times he asked, Come, would you call that one Mumu button or praise the Lord? Well, um, I always think about it because if you look at Delilah's life and Samson's life, it's full of warfare. The Philistines and everything. Sometimes I will sit down and I ask myself those questions. To what extent can a man lay his head on a woman's lap that will make you tell a woman, do this, and she will do it, and they will come, and you know, had it been they succeeded, my life would have gone for it. The second time, the third time, and you keep on continuing. You keep on doing the same thing until you are trapped. So what kind of love, which, which soup did this woman cook? Or how did she manage to do it? Which mumu button that cannot be detached? Which mumu button that cannot be removed? That you get to that point. So it's all about warfare. That is what I see around. But um, I still give kudos to Delilah because for Delilah to keep on keeping Samson, meaning that there's something that she's doing that the women around her have not done because a normal man will keep the lap. Or I don't know what makes the lap, if it's good or this thing, and it's there, death is coming. You'll find out that this is death, real, and you continue. 
So, Delilah, if I still see Delilah, I will ask her some questions. In Jesus' name. Some questions that need to be explained. I don't know, I don't know. I like, I like, I don't know, I don't know. They give you a rope. They prescribe the rope to bind him. They, you, you did. Something, something, you wake up. It's, it's, it's too deep. Thank you, sir. Uh, that question, uh, it's not that, I don't know, maybe I can call it love or no love. But a man that knows himself as a man, the first thing he must know how to do is to fear a woman. Hello. Sir. Ma. Hello. Ma. So fear, I beg, give me my mic. No. Don't no, spoil. No. No. Listen, my reason of saying this is that it's not that, it's not that Samson is Mumu, but one thing I believe is that at least for him, first time, second time, third time, the fourth time. I know it's not repeating the same thing, the same tactics that he is using. No, that, that he is using. We, you know, the first one, he said, when they came, they couldn't, you know, he, he had, he, the power came upon him. So he could, they, could, they didn't succeed. The second time, Delilah went to him and said, oh, like I thought you said you love me. Do you understand? You lied to me. Do you understand? Why would you lie to me? Do you understand? A woman can come in any form. You understand? That's what Say, I'm still saying. Oh, that's the fear. You should fear a woman. That's why I said that. You should fear a woman. No, because there are, there are so many tactics. I want thing I believe okay, that. Okay, would that you rather say, like what he said? Now he said, you know, he's giving kudos to Delilah. Do you understand? Not because that's not the first woman in Samson's life. I'm How was she able to get to? Do you understand what I'm saying? I think it's more of strength on Delilah's part. He has been, I want thing I believe, I understand is that she has been observing Samson for long. She has been studying him. She has been, as in, a, a powerful man. And one thing I can still say about that side is that Samson has a, one thing we call overconfidence. That's what, what I can say. Me, affect him. Because if there is no overconfidence, the first time, second time, third time, suppose we know that this person won't kill me. Kill me. But because he has overconfidence that if they come in two million, no, I have to. He, and the last, if you read the Bible very well, it said that when the call gets him, the time in the pool, he still has God for the last power. So, but one thing I can say it happened to Samson there is that he has overconfidence. Not that I don't know, she, he did not know that that woman wants to kill her. But he's, he has an overconfidence that nobody can do anything to him. So that is my own observation. Amen. Hallelujah. I think it's a very good note to round this thing up. Because though we are talking about the man's world, we are not just man now. We should also know that we belong to God. So we are talking about man's world and as men who are children of Almighty God. Now that's that's the lesson we should learn from this Samson's old. Samson, like Prophet said that he was overconfident. Maybe that confidence was not in God. He was still himself and it will fail you. Now this calls this calls us home now on this ground that no matter what you do, remember one, you are a child of God, and as many as are led by the Spirit of the Lord, they are the sons of God. We must always remember that God is our leader. That's what differentiates us now from the men worldwide. We belong to God Almighty. So whatever is happening, we must always want to know from God. When Delilah has given you sign number one, that's, in fact, there shouldn't have been a second occasion. That first time, run for your life. But for you to have stayed, that meant that he had lost God. Because the Holy Ghost would not have allowed him to stay there by himself. But if you allow God to keep leading you, you won't be there again. After that first incident, you will run for your life. Because something as far as I'm concerned, com committed suicide. He killed himself. He allowed this man to press him so hard until he was vexed in spirit and just added out the, the realities, which he shouldn't have said. 
So you shouldn't, you shouldn't have been that place in the first place. The one that Sam wanted to marry was the woman from Timnat. That one was ordained by God. And when the assignment was done, something has suffocated all the people needed to push out. Her mission was over. God pushed him to somewhere else. But this one was his own leading. And that shouldn't have been so. As children of God, we must know when God wants us to be there and when God wants us to leave. That is my conclusion here. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, uh, Prophet Sunday. Thank you, Brad Bissola. Thank you, Daddy Wood. Thank you, Pastor Nkenka. Please, can you put, give them a round of applause as they go back to their seat? Hallelujah. From all that has been said, you know, understanding our men, from all, you know, we have said today, we have to understand them, know when they are odd, know when they are cold, know when to table the matter, and uh, know when to keep quiet. Praise be to Jesus. The God of heaven will help us as we rise to our feet. Let's pray. Let's open our mouth and thank God. Thank God for your family. Thank God for the grace that he has given unto us to see yet another family Sunday. Thank God for his mercy over your home. Thank God for what he's doing. Thank God for what he will yet do in our lives. Uh -huh. Say, Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. In the name of Jesus, if you are a husband here, commit your household into the hands of God. If you are a wife, commit your household into the hands of God. Commit the children. Even the children should commit their parents into the hands of God. That the God of heaven will continually keep us uh -huh, and cause his face to shine upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, that God will cause our home uh -huh, even to do well in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh, that no strange man, no strange woman will come into our home. No strange children will come into our homes. Uh -huh. The God of heaven will make our children so very great. Uh -huh. In the name of Jesus, if you are a wife here, I know you have had so much. Uh -huh. Pray for understanding, grace to understand your husband. Uh -huh. In the mighty name of Jesus. And if you are a husband here, like what Sister Tony said, grace to support her. And bring out the potentials in her. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh -huh. There is something, there is what, there, there is, there's so much locked up in her. Ask that the God of heaven will help you to tap into those things. Uh -huh. In the mighty name of Jesus. And pray for your children both. Uh -huh. That the God of heaven will keep those ones that the God of heaven has given you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Preserve their souls. Uh -huh. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray as parents here. Yeah. We will not bury our children in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh -huh. Our children will be better, greater than us in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. Forbid it, O oh God, that we bury any of these ones. Forbid it, O oh God, that we know their end. Uh -huh. In the mighty name of Jesus, as we have seen their beginning, we will not see their end. Uh -huh. In the mighty name of Jesus, soak your home in the precious blood of Jesus. Uh -huh. Ask that the blood of the Lamb will speak. I, love also, totally at, uh -huh. I want you to begin to silence every voice. Uh -huh that are not of God in the name of Jesus, voice that are not of God, that begin to silence them, speaking to our children. Uh -huh. They will not obey such voices in the mighty name of Jesus. Under the voice of God, they will hear in the mighty name of Jesus and they will obey in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for distraction against distraction. There are so many distractions in the world today. Pray for your children. Our children will not be distracted. Uh -huh. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, Lord, we thank you. We bless you. Uh -huh. We lift up these homes in your hands. I lift up, oh God, the household of Pastor P. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your family. Lift up your household before God. Uh -huh. Grace, Allah, so tolo, brado, saha, eleke, le, brado, your love continually in our home, aha, your grace continually in our home, aha, in the name of Jesus, fresh wine in our home, aha, in the mighty name of Jesus, le, brado, se, tele, kradia, shaten, dayalabado, saha, the scepter of the wicked will not rest upon our Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, aha, oh Lord, we pray, le, sata, yalaka, le, brado, saha, cause your hand to be established upon this home continually, aha, in the mighty name of Jesus, no sorrow in our home, no pain, no shame, uh -huh. no setback, uh -huh. no lack, no retrogression in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. Celebration continually in this home, in the name of Jesus.
name of our Lord Jesus. Uh -huh. We cover our lives with the precious blood of Jesus and we pray that the blood of the Lamb will speak for us continually. In the name of Jesus, thank you, faithful Father. We give you praise and we give you glory. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Put your hands together. Come along.